Do you have a bottle of water? Against the French and Silver Pavilion. The Wellington Arch is a huge arch right in the middle. And this house on the left is where the Duke of Wellington lives. Apsley House. They call it number one number. Street is another one of central London's major shopping streets. This is the area of Mayfair. This area gets its name from the agricultural and the hiring fair that was held in this area during the time of the mid 17s to the early 1800s during the first two weeks of May. Hence the name Mayfair. If you glance to the right on the corner, you're looking at a red brick building with a glass canopy above its entrance, Le Gavroche restaurant. One of London's most uh, expensive French restaurants. A meal there will set you back at least £100 per person. As this bus moves on from here, if you glance over to the right, you'll be looking at the Embassy Building of the United States of America, built in 1956. As far as I'm aware, it's the only U.S. Embassy building in the world to stand on leased land. Most of the land and property in Mayfair belongs to just one man, Gerald Grobesner, the 8th Duke of Westminster. He owns lots more land and property London-wide. He owns land and property uh, London-wide, he owns land and property country-wide. In fact, he owns land and property in 18 countries worldwide. That makes him worth £5.6 billion. Pounds. To your right, you're looking into Grosvenor Square Gardens, laid out as a permanent memorial to the Normandy D-Day landings of 1944, which drew the Second World War to a close. If you glance over to the left on the corner, you're looking at MacDonald House, the first part of the Canadian High Commission. Canada does not have an embassy in this country, it has a High Commission. That is because Canada is a member of the Commonwealth of Nations. The Queen is the ceremonial head of the Commonwealth. There are 54 member states in the Commonwealth of Nations, countries that many years ago were part of this country's empire. This is Mount Street. As this bus approaches the next set of lights, if you glance to the right, look to the corner pavement level, you're looking at the London Salon of Mr. Nicky Clark hairdresser to the rich and to the famous. That is where a wash cut and a blow dry will set you back at least 250 to 300 pounds. And there's a waiting list there of two and a half to three months before you can get your hair cut there. This is Barclay Square. In the words of the famous song, a nightingale once sang. John is going to be turning left to enter Bruton Street. It was at number 17 Bruton Street on the 21st of April 1926 that the Queen was born. That was 79 years ago. Glance to the right, look to first floor level, you'll see a glass canopy. Next to that glass canopy there's a plaque on the wall which marks the site of number 17 Britain Street, place where the Queen was born, 79 years ago. The next street ahead off to the left, past the traffic lights, is New Bond Street, very well known for the many designer fashion boutiques that are located there. If you've got money to spend, New Bond Street is one place that you could go to. 
The next street ahead off to the right is Old Bond Street, very well known for the many fine jewellers that are located there. Okay, the next stop is for Regent Street, stop number six on the red tour. The streets, uh, sorry, the shops along Regent Street remain open today till 7 p.m. If you glance over to the left on the corner, you're looking at the London premises of Sotheby's, the Welfare Auctioneers, established in 1744. The next street ahead off to the right is Savile Row, who are famous for the many fine tailors that you will find there. A major measure suit from the Savile Row tailors will set you back in the region of 800 to 1,000 pounds. If you can afford that kind of money for major measure suit, why don't you go to the premises of Jeeves and Hawk at number one, Savile Row. Tailors to the Prince of Wales, the heir to the throne of this country. As this bus approaches the next set of lights, if you look ahead, over to the right, you're looking at the entrance to Carnaby Street, which was at the centre of London's fashion industry back in the mid-1960s. It is there that people such as the Beatles and also the Rolling Stones used to go to do part of their clothes shopping. If you are interested in the development and in the history of rock and roll in London, why not take the inclusive Beatles walking tour which operates on a daily basis from the Trafalgar Square stop, stop number 9 on the red tour at so 2.45pm. There are five inclusive walks that are part of your ticket price. The next inclusive walk that you can take from the Trafalgar Square stop is the inclusive Ghosts by Gaston walking tour which leads from the Trafalgar Square stop at um, 6pm today. is Regent Street. To your left is Hanley's, the largest toy shop in the centre of London. Seven floors containing 40,000 toys. Hanley's was established in 1760 by a chap called William Hanley. Not, however, on the same site. The next stop is for Regent Street. Stop number six on the Red Tour. Anybody for this stop? Okay. If you want to do some retail therapy, this is your stop. John, no one for this stop, sir. Regent Street was laid out in the early 1800s. That was according to the instructions of the Prince Regent, who later went on to become King George IV. None of the original buildings along Regent Street survive from the time of the early 1800s. All of the buildings that you can see around you along Regent Street were built between the years 1900, and they were completed around about 1946. All of the buildings along Regent Street are commercial buildings, and of their shops are their offices. All of the buildings along Regent Street are leased. They're rented from just one property company, which is called the Crown Estate. The Crown Estate are one of the largest land of property owners in this country. Within the centre of London, they own 6,500 acres of land of property. All of the rental income that is generated uh, by the Crown Estate is paid into a central fund in this country's treasury, which is called the Civil List. It is the Civil List which funds certain members of this country's royal family, including the Queen. If you've ever wondered why the Queen never seems to be short of a million or two, have a good look around you as this bus travels along Regent Street. If you 
look to the top of the lamppost and they'll read and treat their crowns above all of the lampposts. And that symbolizes that all of the land property along Regent Street is owned by the Crown Estate, one of the largest land property owners in this country. The next stop will be for Piccadilly, stop number seven on the Red Tour. The next stop is the closest for Piccadilly Circus, Leicester Square, Shaftesbury Avenue, as well as for London's Chinatown. If you're looking for a reasonably priced place to go to for a meal, do go to Chinatown. A 10 to 15 course buffet type meal in Chinatown will set you back in the region of... Okay, folks, if you look ahead of you, over to the right, in the centre of Piccadilly Circus, you're looking at the statue of Eros, the world's first aluminium statue, placed on its site in 1893, probably called the Angel of Christian Charity, just ahead to the right. The statue of Eros was placed on its site as a memorial to a great philanthropist who used to live in this area, the Earl of Shaftesbury. Back in the mid-1880s, mass slum clearance took place in this area. Um, that's where most of the streets around here were laid out. And that mass slum clearance meant that many thousands of people were made homeless. It was the sub of Shaftesbury who helped to rehouse those many thousands who were made homeless. If you look immediately to the right in the distance, you're looking at the Duke of York Column, which stands 111 feet high. It was completed back in the late 1780s to honour the memory of Frederick the Duke of York, who was once the commander of all of the armies in this country. Perhaps you've heard the nursery rhyme about the Grand Old Duke of York. Well, that's who the nursery rhyme was all about. Frederick, Duke of York. The next street ahead off the left is Shaftesbury Avenue at the heart of London's theatre land. In and around Shaftesbury Avenue, you will find 50 different theatres. London itself contains about 200 theatres, more than any other city in the world. Above your heads up to the right is Her Majesty's Theatre, where Phantom of the Opera has been shown since 1986. Her Majesty's Theatre is the only London theatre which will change its name with the changing of the monarch. So if and when the Prince of Wales sets on the phone, Her Majesty's Theatre will change its name to His Majesty's Theatre. The Her Majesty's Theatre will be coming into view just ahead, over to the right. And uh, just over to the right is German Street, very well known for the many fine shirt makers that you will find there. If you want a made to measure shirt, you're looking at spending at least 70 to 80 pounds. Okay, does anybody want the next stop? The stop for Haymarket, stop number eight on the Red Tour. This street gets its name from the Haymarket that was held in this area up until 1830. You would have come here up until then to purchase hay for your horses. Uh, anyone for this stop? Haymarket stop? John, no one for uh, this stop. If you look ahead, over to the right, you're looking at Her Majesty's Theatre. And if you keep on looking ahead of you to the right, you're looking up at New Zealand House, the tallest high commission building in this country. The site of New Zealand House was once occupied by a hotel, the Carlton Hotel, which was destroyed during the time of the Second World War. Ho Chi Minh used to work there as a pastry chef and he went on to inspire the founding of the modern day state of Vietnam. The next stop is for Trafalgar Square, stop number nine on the Red Tour. The next stop is the closest for the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery, as well as for the Church of St. Martin in the Fields. 
parish church of Buckingham Palace, probably in 1726. At the Trafalgar Square stop, you can switch to the Green Tour if you want to. The Green Tour from here will take you up towards the British Museum. Does anyone want this stop? A couple of people are out to this stop, John. In the centre of Trafalgar Square, you'll find Nelson's Column, which stands 185 feet high. On top of Nelson's Column is the statue of Lord Horatio Admiral Nelson, the victor at the Battle of Trafalgar, where he defeated the combined fleets of the French and the Spanish. That noble battle took place on the 21st of October, 1805. That's the reason why Trafalgar Square was laid out in 1829. Nelson is regarded as this country's greatest naval hero, and he was killed during the Battle of Trafalgar. Okay, folks, if you glance over to the right, you'll be looking at Admiralty Arch. If you were to go through Admiralty Arch and straight along the Marle, in a third of a mile, you would arrive in front of Buckingham Palace, the London Home and Office of the Queen. Admiralty Arch was completed in 1910. It was built as part of the memorial to honour the memory of Queen Victoria, this country's longest reigning monarch who reigned from 1837 to 1901, over 64 years. This is the stop. For those of you who just stepped on board, this is the Red Tour. My name's Zach, driver's name is John. The folks, there are plenty of seats available upstairs. If you want the most from this tour, do come and sit upstairs. If you have questions, if you have comments, talk to me. This is Whitehall. This street gets its name from the old royal palace of Whitehall, most of which was destroyed by fire in 1698. All about that is from Banqueting House, where the next stop will be, stop number 11 on the Red Tour. To your right is a building called Horse Guards. Every day in front of Horse Guards, from 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, a ceremonial mounted guard is held as a reminder that the Royal Palace used to stand in this area, the Palace of Whitehall. This is stop number 11 on the Red Tour, the stop for Banqueting House, which is back behind to the left, large white stone building, which is still used to host state and ceremonial banquets. Anyone for this stop? No, John, no one for the Banqueting House stop. As this bus moves on from here, glance to the right, look to the opposite side of Whitehall, you're looking at a set of cast iron gates, that's where you'll find the entrance to Downing Street. Set number 10, where you'll find the office of the Prime Minister of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. These country's Prime Ministers have lived and worked along Downing Street from the time of the early 1800s onwards. The next stop will be for Whitehall. Stop number 12 on the Red Tour. The next stop is the closest for Parliament Square, Westminster Abbey, as well as for Parliament, this country's seat of government. Uh, it is too late in the day to be able to do any sightseeing inside Westminster Abbey or inside of Parliament. If you want to visit Westminster Abbey tomorrow, normal hours for sightseeing there are from half past nine in the morning to a quarter to four in the afternoon. If you would like to take a guided tour inside the Parliament, those tours operate tomorrow from ten in the morning to four in the afternoon.